guys, welcome to another episode here at Garage Time TV, and I am Marshall, and today we are jumping back on our 1974 Volkswagen Subaru conversion project, doing more interior work. Now, it's a really hot day, so you may be hearing the fans in the background, stuff like that, while we're here in the garage. It's not quite air-conditioned yet, so we've got these fans going. But we're going to be jumping into our back cargo area here, and we're going to be laying down some carpet, some padding, we've got some spray adhesive, um, and start covering some of, up, of this uh, sound editing material that we did a few episodes ago. If you haven't seen that, I'll make sure to drop it up above and down in the description down for you so you can go check that out when we installed all that goodness. So we're going to be installing some of this beige carpet. We're trying to match our floors that we did um, with that vinyl flooring. Uh, it's a brown color. So we're going to go with this. This is actually a 6x8 indoor-outdoor multi-use carpet that we got from Home Depot for about $20 to $24. Um, in one of their like carpeting areas. It's really like for outside of your front door or in a back patio area or whatever. But we're gonna be using this and I really like this because on the back, there's no true like backing material. So it's super flexible and it's easy to cut, easy to work with and can be molded to shapes. So with that to the side, uh, we're gonna be also putting some of this jute material down. This is kind of what you see on some of the cheaper moving blankets. Um, even like a U-Haul moving blanket is made out of this kind of material. And I like it because it's just an added layer of heat resistance for over our injury compartment and sound deadening to really try and muffle out some more of that sound um, and making a more smooth, consistent surface. My number one concern is I don't want the outlines of all the sound deadening material to come through the carpet. So this will make up some of the gaps, kind of level it out amongst all of it in the grooves and make it look a nice, even surface. So this is actually gonna go down across here on the top and down over where the bench sheet's gonna be. So let me show you a little bit closer look. So here's our jute material. This is kind of the stuff we're gonna be using. This is actually what I used in the 124 conversion. This is some of it left over, uh, some of that other material. But again, one of the number of concerns is I don't want these lips and edges to show um, as we're putting down this nice new carpet. So we're gonna go over all of this and we're gonna come down over this edge, down here and up to match the vinyl flooring there. We're also gonna go over the tunnels. We're gonna probably have two separate pieces of the little flap that comes down uh, to lay over a flat piece on top there, come across and come up this way. Now, of course, we won't be covering up this completely, but we will roll the carpet over and kind of cut out a nice edge and roll it over to make it look nice and finished. The last thing that I still have to kind of work out of the detail is around here, this uh, engine access panel. I don't want carpet to go super far deep, but I might do just a little bit under the lip to help secure it and again an added layer of insulation around here and i just want to be able to cover this uh, we might have to cut out these take these off paint them up make them look kind of decent just a little bit of uh, enamel paint should take care of those and cover all this up and make it look so much better so first things first is we're going to start cutting up some of this jute and we're going to use some spray adhesive to take care of that and put this down first so let me set you guys up and we'll start spraying The padding is in and I'm actually pretty happy with it. We had a couple creases here and there that didn't line up quite right, a little off on this side, but again, it's just the padding. It's not our finished project. Little creases, things like that aren't gonna make a big difference. Um, we are following the contour uh, of the 
ribs here in the metalwork. Kind of see it there. But the number one thing that you don't see is where the sound deadening is and where it's not. So you can see that this kind of filled in all those gaps, kind of leveled it all out. You might be able to see it here and there occasionally, but as soon as we put this carpet on top of all of it, it's just gonna be one big seamless piece. So the next piece of the puzzle is gonna be working on that deck lid after the fact, we'll probably do it after. But I think the biggest challenge is gonna be cutting some of this to length and laying it in here. But I really, really like to have it all go across as one piece and then down. So I think what we may have to do is work on these first. So we're gonna apply the same jute material um, on the wheel wells and on the front side here, just what you saw. And we're gonna start working on the wheel wells first. So we have a little flap of carpet that'll come down to where the seam is here. And it'll come over a little bit and then the new carpet will go on top of it to hide that and make it look a nice clean seam. Now it's gonna be a little tricky, but uh, you know, we can do it. So we're just gonna add more of this and we're gonna make it look like this on the other side, and I'll bring it back when we're done with that. A few moments later. We were able to put in all this padding all the way down the front side, and the good thing is we were able to tuck it in that kind of riveted on lip for the eventual fold down seat. So it's gonna help reduce the rattle of that in the future. We did end up with a little bit of extra on that. I think it was like a, I don't know, a moving blanket size of material, if that's a source of measurement. So we ended up with a little bit of extra. Um, so I think what we may do also is jump up under the front seat, driver's seat, passenger seat, do a little bit of this and put some of the, the carpet there as well. But let's, uh, you know, do this first. But we're done with that. So now we're going to move on to the actual carpet piece. Now again, this is a six by eight piece. It is <clears throat> waterproof, freight proof, wear resistant, fade resistant, stain proof, and recycled. So, like again, this is about $20, $25 at the Home Depot, and it's having one of like the little end carpet displays in our carpeting and flooring section. And they've got it like kind of banded together here on the other end. So, this is where the delicate measuring takes place. By delicate, I mean we're just gonna stuff it in there and see where we can get it to fit kind of close. So, what we're gonna do first is the sidewalls of the trunk area. We're gonna kind of overestimate that to go back towards where one of the panels is gonna be, where that sheet mold insulation is. So we're gonna cut some of that to come all the way to the back to this edge here. There is a little metal trim piece, and I'll show you guys here in a second. There is a metal trim piece here and on the other side here where we can tuck that carpet into it and kind of lightly tap that down. It'll help pinch that carpet into place and won't pull down. Now there are some screw holes as well, so I thought about possibly using some screws with a little bit of the countersunk washers to make sure it's stable and in place so if anything rubs it, it won't get yanked down and the glue gives out over time or whatever. So that way the top will stay up completely. There are not any screw holes on the bottom, so I don't really want to add any more than there already are. But one thing I want to be cautious of is there is a grain pattern to this carpet. And it's kind of like wood, if you want to compare it that way. But it looks kind of square here, but when you turn it sideways, I don't know if it's going to show up in camera, you can kind of see the lines coming straight across. So I want to make sure that when we put it in there, we're following the contours of the line going straight into the bus. And so the same thing is going to be with those walls. I'm going to want to uh, make sure that, that those lines are following the edge of the bus there up to that top lip. So we're going to do the edges first. We're going to do this uh, side here um, and then the other side here. I'm going to cover it. I'm gonna to have to cut around our spare tire cover uh, where our spare tire goes for that little bit of access there as well so we can lock that into place. But other than that, I think we should be able to secure it. Now I could put a little bit of that sound jute material, moving blanket stuff on the side there as well for extra padding and insulation, but up on the side, I'm not super worried about it. There's a lot of panel between there uh, on the outside and the inside. So I'm not worried about that. So. Let's get uh, some of this cut out. I'm going to do some kind of dry measuring, see if I can get a piece of cardboard or something to try and trim that fit up. And then uh, we'll transition it onto our carpet and start laying it in. One hour later. So we can see that the carpet is going in really nicely. Um, I just have it draped over and I glued down this very front edge. I'm going to let this kind of cure. That way when I go to pull and tug and try and shape the last bits of it, it will uh, hold for me and I don't have to have a bunch of weights and it's sliding all over the place. So doing it as a one-man job makes it a lot easier. But you can see these side panels 
actually went up pretty decent. Um, the side that didn't have the fuel filler side ended up being, you know, a lot nicer where the tire hold down is. So it's, you know, a little easier, but this curve really threw me for a loop and there's a couple, you know, bubbles in it and it's not absolutely perfect, but granted we're going to be camping in this and it's better than having just that bare metal. So it is attached, again, not super perfect. This is the first panel I've done. I, I should have done that side first, but it ended up sitting in there okay. Um, you know, we're just gonna be stacking suitcases and stuff back here, camping supplies, things like that. So I'm not super worried about making that look super beautiful. Um, after all, when the bed is all up and everything, we're gonna be sleeping here anyway, so I like it. You know, I could redo it, sure, but you know, we're making progress. So anyway, this is glued down, uh, letting that really cure, letting that really sit. Um, but you can see that just like that, all of the pattern of the metal has just disappeared. You see carpet, we have the grain pattern following on both sides, going forward and just like our vinyl in the middle there. Now I do have this draped all the way over and I don't have the engine lid in and we haven't cut out for our spare tire yet either. Um, but I do have it draped over and let me show you the other side. Hey guys, we're going to take a quick pause and talk about today's video sponsor, Vintage Car LEDs. Are you nervous to drive your classic at night just because your headlights just aren't quite bright enough? Head over to VintageCarLEDs.com and check out their wide variety of headlights that fit in our old classics. You can check out their different products, their apparel, you can even compare the models, contact them with questions, but more importantly, what will fit? If you go here to the middle of the screen, every make and model you could possibly imagine, even for our Fiat design here. We'll go down to a Volkswagen, which is what we've got. We'll go to all, all these options. We're going to go down to the transport. We're going to hit search and here you go all the headlights that'll fit our make and model are here different sizes of uh, full brightness all give you variety and options to drive safely at night now here's a good part is i've got a coupon code for you you save 10 percent with the keyword garage time tv at checkout off your entire purchase again use a coupon code garage time tv on your checkout for 10 percent off your entire purchase so let's get back to the video on the inside here, you can see I've got it draped down over the edge here. So I've got it down to where that kind of metal bar is, and I'm going to work my way from the front, gluing it down, tapping it, gluing it, tapping it, gluing it, tapping it, until I get to this edge, and then I'm going to do a hard 90. So I might have to put a bunch of weights here or something like that on that corner, so I can get a nice sharp curve like this, and drape it down. Now we are going to be short on the bottom. Now granted, we do have a lot of extra left over so we can kind of do a little cover there at the very end to make a nice clean straight edge this is the edge of the carpet so it's a nice clean cut uh, i don't have to worry about trying to make that a true square edge so we'll be able to mate up to our vinyl really nicely and we're going to have a little tweaks with here we might have to cut up on the wheel well so that'll swing over and cover that and you know little stuff like that but we end up i think we're going to try and have a cubby underneath the bench seat if possible i don't know we're going to have to kind of play with that and if we can get a cubby underneath here, it'll really hide this kind of joint of where the carpets, you know, meet and where this comes with the vinyl. The seats are going to be here anyway, so you're not really going to see that, that deep down there. Even if we have a box in the middle, you know, I don't, I'm not quite sure yet. We're still working on that, but we're going to start gluing it down little by little and pulling it forward. And then we'll be able to cut out where our engine compartment lid goes and our spare tire. So ideally in a perfect world, we would have enough material from our cutout to put on top of our engine lid to make it all seamless together. I don't know. We're going to have to play with that when we get done with this, but let's start gluing sections of this down and then we'll start cutting it out.
carpet is secured in the bus. There's one spot on the wheel well that's not quite secured yet. I'll still show you that spot, but let's take a look at what the final product looks like. So that carpet turned out really, really nice. We still have quite a bit left um, of the roll here. So with that extra, I think it's gonna be a really good opportunity to do underneath the seat. So I removed the passenger seat and this is what's underneath it. Some of that sound any material um, and just a lot of gaps um, and things like that. So I think adding some more of that carpet up here to come across the front and drape over the front. Normally there's carpet here or like a rubber mat that sits underneath the seats and those are kind of pricey. So why not just use some of the leftover carpet to do it here under the seats. I don't know if I'm going to put that sound jute moving blanket material underneath first. I may just go straight carpet. Um, about these holes, I may just do the carpet over the holes. They're not really doing a whole lot for me anyway. Um, and then I may come up with some sort of plate. I know there's supposed to be some sort of plate on here because there's supposed to be one over the master reservoir there as well. But I think we'll take the carpet across the top here come up there is this little groove so we may have the carpet start here and then drape across and use this to help pinch that side down and then we'll use the rest of the carpet to finish off these edges and make them really nice complete square and a nice sharp edge and i'll see what i can come up with got a bunch of scrap metal over in the bucket over there so we may come up with just a simple bolt rib nut something to cover that um, or it's some usable space maybe we can come up with something to take advantage of that we'll definitely have to cover that other side as well so nothing falls in there while we're driving and stuff like that so i think we'll end up putting carpet here as well i'm not going to record that it's just a lot of the same process of that of just cutting it to fit making sure it's all straight then gluing it tack it glue it tap it glue it tap it all the way across until it's nice and complete plus uh, we are out of adhesive. We used an entire can for this just to really make sure that's all stuck down and it's holding fantastic. I really want this to set and cure before I start actually like walking on it and sitting on it and all that kind of stuff. Well, with that, that's going to be the end of this episode. We did this in about, I don't know, three hours. That's including recording. So if you're not recording like me, it takes a lot less time moving camera around, planning and talking and all that stuff and just jumping in. But I'm really happy with this. Is it perfect? No. Could you get a kit offline from one of the vendors? Sure, you could do that. But I spent six bucks on a can of adhesive, a good brand Gorilla Glue, and I spent $20, $25 on this carpet, and the moving blanket padding that I had was left over from other projects. So all in all, I'm in this 30 bucks and a couple hours of work. Totally, totally worth it, and totally something you can do without any experience. I am no pro at laying carpet, and I just laid it in there what felt right and you know just went to town with the blade and sure there's a little gaps here and there it's not quite tucked quite right but we're going to use it we're going to camp in it we're not going to be winning tons of shows and awards with this thing we just want to enjoy it and it's actually starting to come together and look like an actual usable bus thank you guys so much for watching i really do appreciate it make sure you like comment and subscribe subscribing really really helps the channel so please make sure you do that we're continually growing. We also have a Facebook page. I'm on Instagram, so please make sure you follow me there. On our page, we actually have a group, like a group chat type thing. It's a page where you talk to each other and share pictures and anyway, come join that as well. I love to hear your stories and what you're working on and sharing pictures from your projects. Thank you guys again so much. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, we'll see you.